Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm Linda Israel, and I'm so glad to have you here in the chat and watching me live today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, if you would give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're new, definitely I want you to speak up in the chat so I know that you're here. If I don't see it right away, just say something again, because the, sometimes the chat moves pretty quickly. Um, let me see. I'm waiting on the chat. The chat's a little slow today, it seems like. So we'll just kind of grin and bear it, if you will. Come here. You want up here? All right. Come on. You want to go up there? Go up there. Say hi. Go up there. Go. Hercules wants to say hi. <laughs> Hey, um, I've got a raffle right now. This is a free raffle. You can type exclamation point raffle. And when you do so, you're entering in to win possibly 200 junk bucks. So definitely enter in if you haven't already. <clears throat> What are junk bucks? Junk bucks are a virtual currency that I use while I'm live streaming. It's a way for me to give back to those of you that come to my live streams. You can type exclamation point um, bucks, exclamation point bucks to see how many you have. And when you have 2,000 of them, 2,000, you can redeem them by typing exclamation point award, and then I will send you a $10 off coupon. I have to have your email address if you're new, and you should be uh, going over to my website at lindaisrael.com, creating a user account and saying, hey, I come to your live streams. And if you make a donation, then I can get you added into my YouTube membership on my website, which gives you a discount on items at my shop. It also gets you some freebies as well. Hey, Henry's even stopping in. Thank you, Yorkie butt. I know. <laughs> hey, Thelma. Hey, Kimberly. Hey, Angelica. Robin, Julie. Uh, look who else I see. Patty. Hey, hey, Kimberly. Hello, hello, hello. I think Isabel as well is new. So thanks for being here. Hey, Connie. Nice to see you. Uh, what else? Let's keep the chat upbeat, friendly, and helpful. So if you have a question, do put all caps. I'll do my best to answer it. If I don't see it, ask again. If you in the uh, chat know the answer, please feel free to answer that question of whoever comes up there. Uh, let's see. Robin is my official note package. Yay, Janice. I'm glad you love it. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very close. <laughs> Only 1963 bucks to go for a coupon code, Angelica. <laughs> hey, Diane. <laughs> um, let's see. Robin is my official note taker. She'll be taking notes. But if you have a message that I need to get about an order or something to do with my shop, do go over to my website, lindaisrael.com, and use the contact form there. That way I have your email address and we can correspond back and forth via email. Hello, hello, hello. Let's see what else. Um, 
I do have a few journals. <clears throat> I'll kind of get these down. I do have a Christmas journal that I can offer as a giveaway at the end for those of you that donate. I also have a journal that I made a couple of weeks back where I put the fabric on the outside so it's got lots of eclectic pages in it. I have another eclectic journal here that was using some pages that I made and some of the All About Robins kits. There's all kinds of goodies in those. So if that's something that you're interested in, I will share that a little bit later. And uh, you can make a donation of any dollar amount. And once we reach our minimum goal, we'll give away at least one journal today. I need some lipstick. My lips seem dry. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, Cheryl. Welcome. Hi, Teresa. Hercules wants my lipstick. And for some reason, he decided he wanted to be in my lap right now. He's been at my feet or in his bed, and he's perfectly fine over there or underneath. But now he wants to be in my lap. You're, you're being a pest. You know that, right? Yeah, you're being a pest. <laughs> so I thought today that it's really close to Christmas time. You may need a few quick gifts that you want to make up and... I'm using supplies that I have. So when I describe something that I'm using, think about things that you may have that you could substitute, okay? You ate too many candy canes today? Robin, you'll give yourself mouth sores, those little sugar bumps on your tongue. That's not good. <laughs> hey, Linda, so glad to have you here. Hey, Margie, welcome, welcome, welcome. Where are you going, Hercules? <laughs> you got to smell the glue? You trying to smell the glue? So I thought it might be kind of fun to, to make some little journals that maybe you have a few supplies left over from making another project or you just have some stuff that's in your stash that you want to get rid of. This would be a good project for that. <laughs> Let you do it, Margie. <laughs> Uh-oh, Elsie. Hey, you're here, Elsie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. So what I've done is I have some watercolor paper that I got from Canvas Court Brands like two, maybe three years ago. This was paper that they sold because they used to provide products for Michaels. And this had a 12 by 12 sheet originally, and they ended up with some overstock at Canvas Court Brands, but it had a sticker on it, and they couldn't peel the sticker off without damaging the paper. So they cut it in half and sold the part that didn't have a sticker in like a junk pack. Then they had the other half that had the sticker on it, and I took most of those. And what I did was I trimmed them down, to, he wants me to pet him. I trimmed him down to be a nine by five and three quarters of an inch piece and scored it. So this is going to be my cover for my journals. Now, if you don't have, you know, paper like that, think about maybe a cereal box or food boxes that you may have that you could alter that material, if you will. You could also glue several sheets of paper together to make that outer cover, if you so choose. So think about your materials that way. You may have some cardstock from scrapbooking that you want to use. Hey, use that. You know, my thing is that there are no rules in junk journals, okay? Now, there's no right, wrong way to do a junk journal. It's whatever you interpret a junk journal to be for you. There are some groups and organizations that, thank you, Lori, thank you so much, Lori, that they're like, well, a junk journal is only a true junk journal if you're using trash. And there are other groups that are like, well, you need to use X percentage of junk or trash. And then there's some groups that, you know, hey, they use all their scrapbook paper, they use digital downloads, and they might throw in a couple of things like a junk mail or a book page. And so that still gives it a little bit of that junk, but it may not be the whole journal. So don't let anybody define what you're doing for your own personal use. Now, if you're enjoying a group that's going to do a swap, do follow their rules. <laughs> um, 
So today I thought we'd just kind of play around with some of the supplies that I have and I would show you some journals. So what I've done is on this particular one, this was all book pages that's in the background here. This was a scrap of paper that was laying on my desk. In fact, here's still a little bit piece of it that was laying here. This is a rubber stamp. I rubber stamped some butterflies. I rubber stamped a floral piece here. I stitched it with my sewing machine. I stitched this inner part when I had all these layers and then I stitched the outer part to the cover. So I don't have all those stitches and you'll have that inside uh, cover blank so you can write on there. I have used some copy paper. I used to work in the corporate world and thank you so much, Teresa, for your donation. Thank you, thank you. And I was able to pick up back then the colored copy paper because we would do flyers, we would do special newsletters. I was also the newsletter editor for a couple of organizations. So we always bought fancy paper and I always ended up with the excess because I was the one that usually bought the paper. So I have a bunch of this paper. I have some scrapbook paper that I know I won't ever really use because maybe I only had one sheet of it and I've been trying to figure out what to do with it. I've got a book page here that also has a mixed media page on the bottom. And so all I did was just cut all of this eight and a half by 11 paper in half. And that's my foundation of my journal. So that was one journal. Let me set this over somewhere out of the way. Oh, I know what I do. I'll put it in my basket because I'm going to give away a couple of journals at the end. So if there's one that catches your eye, you need to speak up. So this one, I had a piece of cardstock. That's the teal in the background. This is a gel print that I made, book page. This is an image of a photo that I, of the flowers that I took from my garden a couple, I think it was two years ago now, that Norella then used some of my mixed media pages that I scanned in to make a journal card. This is normally like postcard size, but I told my printer to print it smaller. Then I have a rubber stamp that says only good girls keep diaries. Bad girls don't have time. And that's Tolua uh, uh, Bankhead. Hello, Maria. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> we can't see. We can't see Linda at all. You can't see me? Who can't see me? Lori, refresh. Because everybody else, I think, can see me, can't you? <laughs> um, so that is sewn on as well, like I did before. I sewed this piece together away from the cover, and then I sewed the outer area. I'll show you here in just a moment. And then the inside is pretty much the same concept. All right. What do you want, Hercules? Why are you being a pest? Huh? Do you want down? Okay. There you go. Bye-bye. You going to come back? All right. <laughs> hey, Elsie, thank you so much for your donation. You have no time, Angelica. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. So here's what I thought I'd do with the first one. So I've got my uh, base. I went around it with some distress inks. It, the paper got a little bit dirty. There may be some smudges on it. If you, okay, you can see me. Thank you. Hey, Maria. Um, if you have paper that gets a little smudge on it, well then deliberately come in with your distress tool and add more sponges, uh, uh, smudges, not sponges, smudges, because then it'll help hide what was going on. Okay. So I've got that piece. I went ahead and trimmed down. This was a book page that I painted that using the retro panel two stencil over a book page. It looks like I also stamped it just a little bit in there. So you have a little bit of that texture. I've gone around the edge with some distress inks and then I happened to cut a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper into four pieces. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. And what I like about this type of technique, if you make all your journals the same size, you can pre-cut all your paper and, and y'all probably can't see it, but up here in front of me, I've laid out stacks of paper already folded in half. And that's what I'll use for the pages inside. All right. And then I have another book page here that I have trimmed to go with this bright yellow. And I think what I want to do is alter the book page here because I don't want it to be 
that ivory. I think I want to change the color of that. What color do I want it to be? Do I want it to be purple? Do I want it to be yellow? This is a yellow that I have here. Would that be better to have a little bit of a yellow frame behind that? Do you see that? I think the yellow would look good. I'm kind of liking that already. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this piece. I've got a little scrap of paper here, and I've got a paintbrush. So I'm going to use some Tattered Angels. This is golden orange, which is kind of a yellow-ish color. I'm going to shake this up. Now, what I like about this technique is if you want a pop of color, but you don't want to waste product, you don't want to waste paper, well, look what you can do. Just take your paintbrush and then paint a border because that's all that's going to show on this piece of paper once I glue all the layers together. Okay, I'll put my paintbrush in some water and clean it off so I can have it again later. Put your lid back on your tattered angels and I'm going to test this real fast. Yes, that should meet my needs. So I'm going to go ahead and use my distress tool and dry this. You want to make a purple journal next? Oh yes, that would be wonderful. Oh yeah, the Panera has pet plaid bags and cups for Christmas. Yeah, those are perfect. You're doing a purple journal at the moment, Julie. Awesome. Now you can see Lori. Yay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Laura's already got her Dawn dish soap on, huh? <laughs> so I'm just drying that Tattered Angels. Okay. And I'll go ahead and hit the edges again with my Distress Ink walnut stain so that's what i'm using here is walnut stain and i always buy the re-inker and i do encourage you that if you buy a stamp pad to go ahead and get the re-inker as well all right so now i've got this all layered i think what i want to do oh yeah i like that how's that look and if we're going to layer that on top of this piece see how that looks together so I'm going to glue these two pieces together. <laughs> hey, Gloria, welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. Thanks for coming by, Gloria. How are you, lady? I hope you are well. Hope y'all are having a great holiday season. Like next week is Christmas, y'all. Can you believe it? It's almost here. It is almost here. All right, so I'm just going to smooth this out. I do plan to go to the sewing machine, so hopefully I've got that set up right. Uh, we are going to have the sewing cam lamb here in just a moment. And I think this piece, I'm going to put those together. Couldn't find your black re-inker? <laughs> I hate that. I hate that a lot. I uh, I ended up this last time when I was out of re-inker for my black. I bought three. They happened to have a three pack on Amazon. So I went in and bought that. You still haven't found all your ink pads, Robin? Really? They're going to be a bin somewhere. Hopefully it's still available in your in your stuff. All right. So there is so far what we're going to put together. I got out a piece of lace. Hey, Robin, I found my bag of lace. Um, I don't know how much I want to use here, so I'm just kind of looking at it. You know, it's it's a purple on purple, and so I'm thinking maybe I don't want the purple. Let me see what else I have. I have some white. Maybe we want the white instead. We can do something like that on there. Although it doesn't show up either, does it? This is one that I painted a pink color. 
try to see what else I have here. You know, and sometimes you don't need the lice. Maybe the lice isn't going to work. But I just wanted to see if it was something that I wanted. Here is a little ruffled lace. Is that something that I want? You know, what I think I might do is make this purple lace a darker shade of purple. Then it will stand out a little better. Oh, yellow tattered angels on the white. Well, see, then it'll be the same color as this if I use the same tattered angels. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snip this. So I've got this little piece here. And it's just lace, so I'll snip this one. And here's what we're going to do. We're gonna, I'm going to color both, okay? Lace always works in your world, world Robin. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to see if I have a different shade of yellow. Do, do, do. I have a really old maple yellow. Let's see what happens. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay this in here. Let's put it kind of like that. Oh, this has been sitting around for a while. Use orange tattered angels. Now let's see what happens. It's a different, it's kind of a, it says it's called maple yellow. It's kind of a mustardy color. Okay. I lost the lid. Maybe I didn't have the lid. And then here's the purple. So what I'm going to do is use the fully purple and spray that. So it'll make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to dry both of those and let's see what happens. Maybe we'll use both. Angelica votes for green. <laughs> Orange matches the flowers. But what I like about having ivory or white lace is that I can change the color. So I don't buy lace unless it's in white or ivory anymore. I don't buy it in colors because I know it's easier to change that color to be whatever I want. Matches my eyes. Yes, it matches my green eyes. <laughs> you like that, Isabel? Diane says, purple's my vote. All right, so let's see what happens. So what if we did, let's do something like this. Maybe we could even get away with both. How about that? Let's go right out to the edge. Put this down. Okay, what do you think? I think the both. I think both. And then I'm going to stitch here on this portion. And then when I co go to put it to the cover, I'm going to stitch out of here. So I'm just going to put a little piece of glue, a bit of glue right here, and see what happens. Oh, thank you, Linda, for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm only putting glue on the inner portion. Yes, Isabel says. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do both layers. I'm just kind of positioning this. A little bit over to one side. Oh, you can't see. I'm pushing it over to this side so we have the lace over here. Thank you so much for supporting me. I greatly appreciate it. All right, so we're going to go over to the sewing machine. So sewing cam lamp. Thank you to Giovanna. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch around this area here, and then I will put a little bit of glue, and then we'll stitch it onto our cover, okay? Sewing cam spoiler. <laughs> All right, let's make sure that my camera is in this shot here. I see my sewing machine. So my, whoop, about to lose my other camera here. All right. So my sewing machine is just a regular electronic sewing machine. It's an older model. I've had it about five years. It's a brother called Simplicity SB3129. It was like a $600 retail machine. You don't need to spend that much money. I bought this because I was also quilting at the time. And so I wanted a better, newer machine. It also has electronic thread cutter, an automatic threader. So I got it for my ease. Okay. I've got it set up with a zigzag stitch. I have regular thread, regular needle. So if you are sewing on fabric already and you have thread, use that thread. And you can pick up the comb thread or the small spools of thread, just do whatever you have. And I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. I'm going to start here on the yellow. I'm trying to decide. I want to go up to the edge or right in the center. I think I'm going to go on the edge of this yellow paper. So I'm just going to start stitching all the way around. When I get to the end, I raise my presser foot and rotate my paper and then start stitching again. Stitching around. And then I'm gonna stitch on this side. So I just stitched where the yellow is. And now that I'm looking at that, I think what I might do is just do a single stitch, not a zigzag, right around the edge. So I'm just gonna go back to, let's see, what is it? All right, and I'm just gonna stitch right on the edge. gives it a little frame. All right, so you see how I framed that? What do you think? Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm going to glue this real fast, just a little bit, just so it doesn't shift on me while I'm sewing. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right in the middle. Oh, I'm out of camera frame. Right there in the middle. And then put that centered onto my cover. And then I'm going to start up here in the corner and then stitch this down. I'm going to stitch the purple part. Oh, I meant to change needle, change my stitches. everybody been working on <clears throat> been working on doing some gel printing yesterday I've started to record a video for Thursday yesterday I've got to scan all the images because I plan to use them so there we go all right let's go back over here to the main all right we're back Okay, so see how that turned out? Yeah, you like with both, and that it just gives a little touch, and it's right there on the edge. Got a little bit of texture. All right, so now I know that I only have nine pages up here, so I have a book page that I want to alter. 
And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to lay it into my spray box. Let's just grab a, a stencil. So this is from the December Stencil Club. All my stencils, oh, there they are, they're buried. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. Oh, wait, no, I've decided I want to change that. I'm going to use the January stencil from the Stencil Club. I'm also going to grab another sheet of paper out of my Bible that I've torn apart. Use big pages of any kind that you want. I just use these because I know that I don't have to worry about foul language. <laughs> oh, you made some book fabric. Awesome, Isabel. You like that, Robin? Thank you. You're getting there, Mala. Yes, you are. Hello. Oh, so this is enter the raffle. I'm going to spray this. And then I'm going to use this other sheet of paper to mop up. See how this looks. Oh, I like that. Get some texture. It's pretty colors. The new January stencils. <laughs> I got your rubber stamps, Angelica, so I'll be sending your package out tomorrow. And there's this side. I'm going to go ahead and spray this side just purple. And I'm going to dry this real fast. Mop it up! Oh yeah! Definitely! If you're working on something right now, become a member of the Friendly Giant Journal People Facebook group if you haven't already. And share with us what you're working on. You know, hey, if you're inspired by something that I share and it gets you into the creative mode, hey, let me know by sharing a picture of what you're working on and where you got the inspiration. You love doing this, Julie? It's fun, isn't it? So here's one way to alter a book page, okay? Isn't that purple amazing? That is fully purple. Fully purple. This bag. All right, I'm going to take this and cut it in half. I'm going to cut it to be uh, five and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches. And this is going to become a journal page in my journal. I want to put a pocket on there. And I happen to have this book page. It's a, looks like a dictionary page that I took a blue or purple paint and I used like a gift card and just spread it like that all over. And then I use the postcard collage, I think, or postal collage, maybe postal collage. and inked it with white acrylic paint and stamped it over and over and over. So that's what gave this, this color and texture. That was fully purple, fully purple, tattered angels. Exactly. It's not, it's, it doesn't take very long at all. What is Teresa asking? No, uh, you have to be, if, if I have your address, no, Teresa, just tell me that you're not going to be here so that we can have someone enter the raffle for you. You in love? All right, so I'm going to take this piece and fold it in half. So it's five and a half by eight and a half inches, because basically my journals are a half of a page 
of eight and a half by 11. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm just going to fold down across the top there. You see that? And why I'm doing that is that this is going to become a pocket and that gives that upper portion just a little bit more strength. Okay. So this again is where you can use your, um, book pages and junk mail. You're very welcome, Teresa. All right. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue under here to do like so and like so. All right, then I've got this piece that's going to be my book page base. See how that's coming together? All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just put this between, so it's on, you can see on either side, and I'm gonna put a little glue right down the sides. So we have a little pocket in our mini journal, okay? All right, I'm getting ready to draw. Y'all enter the raffle, R-A-F-F-L-E. Oh, come on. All right, so I'm letting that dry. You need more bucks, Margie. <laughs> I forgot to put some distress inks on it, but we can just do it on the outside edge. You don't have to paint the pages like I just did. I just wanted to show y'all that you could further embellish your junk if you want, okay? All right, let's do the raffle. So y'all, if you haven't already, enter the raffle. Oh, here we go. I was getting some goodies. Oh, Linda Gray won the FFA for 30 junk bucks. Woo woo. <laughs> All right, so. You're donating a bunch of stuff at the after the first of the year, Robin. <laughs> oh, rake files are fun. Yep, yep. <laughs> hey, Mary, type exclamation point raffle. Exclamation point raffle. Hey, Manda Dawn. Hello. And Merry Christmas, y'all. I see a couple more people getting in there. Tie up exclamation point raffle. I'll give you just a little bit longer. All right, I'm gonna, while we're waiting, I'm just gonna grab some papers here. So I'm just picking them up. Get ready to get busy back in the group. Well, we'd love to have you back, Elsie. Love to have you back. Just random papers for the inside. Hello, hello, hello. All right, I'm waiting on Mary to get in. And then I'm gonna put this one in the center. I'm not gonna put anything in the pocket, but I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it into the center. And then I'll bind this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Getting out all my tools. Hello, Norella. We are good. How are you, lady? Hey, can you tell me? I think this is some of your... Uh, artist trading card or journal card, little journal cards. I think so. I don't know if they're artist trading card. 
It might be because that's the size. It's yellow. Oh, there he goes. Angelica offers herself being a crafty friend for a gift card from Linda's shop. <laughs> ah, too funny. I've got a little template that I'm just going to line it up in the center. And that's also what makes this go fast. If you make them all the same size, you can use the same template. Come in here, poke the holes, bind them up, and it goes pretty quick. So I just poked three holes for a pamphlet stitch and I have some wax linen thread on a book binder's needle. So I'm going to start in the middle and go around to the outside top. I didn't get the link for that uh, digital, so I don't know which one it's from. I am making a let me get a, hang on. I'm going to bind this up and I'll get my ruler so you can see it. Basically, I'm my cover is just slightly larger than half an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I cut it to be nine by five and three quarters for the cover. And my pages are eight and a half by five and a half in measurement. Okay. So I'll get my ruler and we're going to do the raffle now. So that is nine by five and three quarters. And when this is closed, this is four and a half by five and a half. Okay. So it's relatively small. I'll leave my ruler there for a moment. Okay. Yeah, you have to, you can't have too much stuff in there, Robin, because then you wouldn't have a place to live. <laughs> All right. So the winner of 200 junk bucks is Connie Barch. Congratulations, Connie. You've won 200 junk bucks. Okay. So now let me figure out what I'm going to call this. Yes. Click here and we're going to say um, notepad envelope um tuck spot open so i just grabbed a few things from my stash this is a little notepad or notebook that was made with an image from calco collage some scrapbook cardstock then some scrapbook papers this is a four inch wide with a 12 inch long piece of cardstock scrapbook papers and then I don't this size is three and three quarters by four and a half ish pretty much and I just stitched that on there so it's a nice little notepad that you could add into a larger journal or you could make a bunch of these these would make great gifts too so you have a lot of scrapbook paper just cut it into four inch strips Fast stack them together, stitch it with a sewing machine if you want. That's stitched with a sewing machine, it's hard to tell, but it's been stitched with a sewing machine. Or use the pamphlet stitch binding, a stapler, however you want to do it. And then you can decorate that. And then this is a little envelope that I made. This was from last year's envelope uh, tutorial that I made. And it's got a little journal card on the inside. And I offer this template in my shop, this little fancy envelope shape and then this is a little tuck spot that you can choose to maybe put glue across one side in the bottom so you could tuck right behind it if you so choose or you can glue it all the way down and then you've got this little journal card that comes with has a little bit of fabric on there so that will be our next prize all right do you like the little journal little mini well that was one let's see what else we can do here Had to get some water. Thank you, Janice, for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All righty. Oh, that's what I didn't do. I was going to add additional writing space on here, but I don't think I need to. I think I kind of like the way that looks. I was going to take 
a little piece of this paper, but I don't want to cover that up. So we're going to leave that. I think I want this one. So I started to make a grouping of things that I thought I might want to use. So I have here a four and a quarter by five and a half piece of red uh, text weight paper. I have a book page. You like those, Jennifer? Thank you. This is an image from the Radiant Red kit. I just love this. And I thought this could go on here, but I think it needs something else in this as well. And I got out a piece of this black. So do I want to put a little bit of black on here and give it that black frame right behind there? I could also change this up where this is the bigger portion. I'm kind of thinking I want The frame I could do that way I could do it both okay let's do that I'm gonna trim this black paper to mat behind this piece so if I measure this out it was four and a half by three and a half so I want to go out to let's see what happens when I go to five now four four and three quarters of an inch. So I got four and three quarters and I'm making a little frame. Yes, add the black. You like the black? Okay. And then we said three and a half. So if we get out to three and three quarters, is that what I want? This must not be three and a half. Not quite. Okay, I think right about there. All right, so if I add this in here and then put that on top, I think I kind of like that, just like that. I like it. And then I was thinking of doing this, remember, and just putting that on top. I could back it. Let me see something else here. What would happen if, okay, so this would be three quarters of an inch, and this is two inches, so if I go two and a half, is that too far? Two and a quarter, about two and a quarter inches. All right, I know that I just cut a piece of book page, but I did that to show you a way to alter that piece to use. So if you don't have black, but you do have black paint, or in this case, I have the It's Black Tattered Angels. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab that. Ah, why are you falling in the floor, stuff? I'm going to dip that in and we're going to paint the edge. It'll make it more of a gray. If I keep painting it in layers, it will be black. I could also paint it with, like I said, acrylic paint. Maybe even layer them cattywampus at an angle. Okay. Gotcha, Norella. Oh, you got to check. <laughs> what Amanda Dawn said, I think she should get have a traveling d stash organization team. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what we need. We'll just travel across the world going and helping people d stash. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, Lori, being able to give it away that way. Caddy Wampus, I'll show you, Angelica. All right, so we're going to put that behind. 
So Norella says maybe a little cattywampus, and I'm thinking maybe something like that. And we could do the same with the saying. Is that what you're thinking? This is cattywampus, where they're not all lined up. At an angle, not straight. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. <laughs> it's a technical term, exactly. <laughs> you like that? And we can stitch this together if we want. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these into place. Thank you, Karen, for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm going to put this one down kind of at an angle. And then we're going to go the opposite direction. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kind of rotate this just a little bit. And then this I'm going to put pretty much straight on, okay? You like Caddy Wampus? <laughs> oh, so someone tell Elsie to hit live in the chat because she may be behind. Yeah, you may need to refresh. All right, so let's just line this up. It's an optical illusion. I'm going to glue these together, but I'm not going to put them down yet. And we're going to go over to the sewing machine. First, I'm going to put some distress inks on this edge. All right. So we're going to go to the sewing machine. And we're going to stitch around the red portion here in the center, which will give that a nice little frame. And then we will stitch it onto our cover. I'm just adding distress inks. It just helps me feel like it's finished. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go over to the sewing machine. I'll stitch around this area and then I will glue it down because I don't think I need to stitch on this portion. I was going to do that cattywampus, wasn't I? Oh, well, I already glued it together. We'll just make it straight. Okay, let's go do that. <laughs> sewing lamb. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go back over to the sewing machine and I'm changing my stitch length because I want it to be two and two. I just like that length. And so I'm just going to stitch around this portion in the inner where the red. So I stitched around that inner portion there. You see that? Okay. And now I'm going to glue it to the cover real fast. And then stitch it again. So I just put a little bit of glue in the middle. And then I'll put this down. Lining it up. And then we're going to stitch around this outside edge. We are. You're right here with me stitching, right? You're here in spirit. Oh, she may have, may, may have stepped away. That happens. 
You like it? Thank you. You like it? All right, so then let's put remember. I think I'll have it where it comes off to the edge over here. I could go this way. I think I want I don't know. Do I want it that way or this way? I think this way. You're crocheting. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> she's crocheting. So she's using her fingers. Therefore, she can't be tapping all the time. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to put that right about there. Okay. And I happen to have, where is it? I have this piece that I cut earlier, so I'm going to fold it in half. That's going to be my center page. I've been putting pockets in the other, so, you know, I do have a piece of this black left that we could use. Or maybe what I'll do is just get a book page. Let me see if I've got one already. No, okay, let's get it. All right, so I've got a book page, and this time I don't want there to be any voids on the edges, so I'm just going to cut off a strip. And I save these strips. I'll we're going to do something with the strips later. Okay. Thank you so much, Connie, for your donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so now I'm going to cut this to be five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. I'm going to grab my scrap of paper here. We're going to make this book page be the pocket on this red. So I'm going to look at this and say, okay, so if I fold this in half, that's how much we're going to see. I'll go ahead and put some distress inks on it so I don't forget. Glad you're back. <laughs> yeah, the black does make it pot, doesn't it? My best friend taught me how to knit and then my grandmother spent an afternoon with me and taught me how to crochet and then i read lots of books so i could learn different patterns and i used to make up my own patterns all right i think what i want to do is i want to stamp on this portion you know i haven't used it in a while let's see what do we want to use Let's see here what I have that I want to put like a repeating pattern over it. So I'm trying to decide. Yeah, I think maybe the Bella Rose. If I can find it. We'll see it there. I could do the romantic swirl. Maybe that's what I'll do. Because I have a few of those in my stash. So let's get the romantic swirl out. So I have the romantic swirl here. I'm going to stamp in black ink. Oh, that's wonderful to crochet your own lace. That's pretty. Your mother tried to teach you, she gave up. All right, so I'm just going to stamp this kind of all over. You see that? Just kind of makes it a pattern all over. So stamp. Stamping away. And I'm just randomly stamping to fill in the space. So I'm rotating the stamp every so often. 
And that was the Romantic Swirl. So, let's put that in there. What I didn't do is fold this over, so I'm going to do that real fast. You can also double the thickness of your paper if it's too thin. What do I have my stamps stored on? I have them on a combination of things. One of those is from um, Crafter's Companion. They are stor stamp storage sheets. But then I discovered that I could laminate cardstock. And I ended up, I'll show you. So I either stamped or cut out the paper backing that came with the stamp and wrote the names if they didn't have the little uh, tag to go with it. And then I laminated it and it sticks quite easily. And that way, when I uh, put my stamps up, I can find them. I know where they go. You're deconstructing an afghan. I'm almost finished recently in making one I hope will like. Okay, cool. She bought your books. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard. My, my best friend had a hard time because even though I'm right-handed, I was holding things weird because of when she was showing it to me. But we finally figured it out, but it took a little while. Okay, I kind of like that. Just that little black and white. Uh-oh, Robin left. <laughs> Robin's a gone. All right, so I'm just going to glue this down. And then flip this over and glue this side. And you could use your sewing machine if you want. Could stitch across here and then um, stitch it down the sides if you want. Oh, so I laminated the card so the stamps would stick to the card. It's card stock. It's just paper. So the the sheets that come from um, Crafter, <coughs> <pardon me. coughs> Crafter's Companion are basically like laminated sheets anyway. And so I was like, I have cardstock and I would really love to have an index of the stamps so that when I store them, I knew what they look like. So I just stamped or used the cutout from my stamp package. These were from Beeline Designs and place them all on here where my stamps could fit. And then I laminated that with heat lamination. This is like a three millimeter thick. And I'm also using 100 pound cardstock. If you don't have 100 pound, just use two sheets of cardstock, glue them back to back, and that'll make them stronger. Otherwise, if you use too thin of a paper, it won't hold up. I, I'm holding this in the center, and I'll bring it out this way. And it's barely bowing. So you don't want something that if you put weight on it, it's just going to bend over. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. This, I, I made my own sheet. Oh, fine. Just leave us, Norella. I'm going to pout. <laughs> Have a good night, Norella. Bye. You like that idea, uh, Gloria? I mean, it's a great way to store your stamps that are cling mount. All right, so that's going to be my center for this journal. And I'm just going to start grabbing papers again. Ooh, I like this one. Is it green or black? I don't know, but I think we're going to use it. So I did go ahead and grab all different colors here. 
I'm going to start with this kind of a gray color and then just start putting all of these in here. Scrap it paper. It is easy, Mala. It is easy. <laughs> Party over. Rob is back. <laughs> You know, I have a friend that tats and she does beautiful work and I just don't have the desire because it's so tiny. All right, so that's what I did. Let's bind it together. Yeah, it, it, it's difficult. I think so. It's so tiny. I just like, no, nope, not doing it. And she would do, I, I guess tatting is where you have a bobbin. Does that sound right? Or a shuttle. But she also had these um, special bobbins that her husband made. Oh, they were beautiful. Um, Julie, if they don't stick anymore, depending on how you clean them, sometimes if you just take water and very mild soap, then let that clean it and let it air dry without sticking it down. Sometimes they'll go ahead and start working again. But if that doesn't work, you can use what I call a two-way glue. So a two-way glue would be, I'll give you a couple of options. Oh, you can't read this label. You can use something like the best glue ever. That what you do is you put a small amount of the glue on, let it air dry without sticking it to anything, and then it's tacky. And then this is called Zig two-way glue and do the same thing you can just take this little nib and you have to push it to get the glue to come out and you can draw on the back of your stamp that doesn't stick anymore let it air dry and it'll be sticky again you could also use double-sided tape just know that some double-sided tape are permanent so you may want to use a temporary double-sided adhesive like um I don't know if I have one, but I have this brand, Glue Dots. Now, this is a permanent one, but sometimes there is a repositionable one, and you could just put a row of those on the back of your stamp or your block. Okay, that's what I thought. There's tatting with and without a shuttle. She did it with this um, bobbins. She made them with bobbins. Her tatting was done with bobbins. I'm going to go ahead and cut twice the length that I need. And her husband, who is deceased now, but back then, he made all these beautiful wood-turned uh, bobbins that were basically long pieces, kind of think like this, that you could wind the string onto, and then you could feed this through, and they'd hang so you could keep your work in order where you need it to be. You could even colorize them or um, label each one of these so you know it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because you have to like weave them in and out. I don't know. She showed me, and I'm like, this is too complicated. <laughs> Yes, and Aline's tacky, uh, tack it over and over. It's Aline's tack it over and over. You could use that as well. I'm trying to think what other brands of glue. So if you read about a glue that is um, repositionable, usually, meaning you air, let it air dry and then you elect it to be like a sticky note, tack it over and over. Yeah. I don't have any of the tacky tacky glue. I'm out of it. I used to have it, but I think I probably just quit using it because I have other options. And glue does go bad. Oh, there you go. Jeanette says uh, Suniko has a sheet called tack and peel that goes onto your acrylic block and is sticky to hold onto stamps that either don't have a back or it's lost its stick. Now that won't help you if you want to store it onto a sheet unless you use that same product on your sheet to hold your stamp. Well you might as well just put the sticky product on the stamp in my opinion. All right good night Isabel thanks for coming thanks for stopping by. Come by Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, so three hours earlier. 
when I will have a live premiere. It'll be a recorded video, but you can chat with us. All right, so I'm just tying a square knot after making a pamphlet stitch. Lost my scissors. All right. Well, Norella came in, made her demands of how she wanted this to look, and then she left. See how she is? Good vibes. Oh, all right, Elsie. I hope you get better internet. You like it? So that's what it looks like. And then I just chose some different papers for the inside. I like that stripe. So then when we get to the center, we have this that we can put stuff in. Naughty Norella. Uh, I'll be doing gel printing. Gel printing. That's what I'll be doing Thursday. And then we'll make a project with it. I've done the gel prints. I haven't recorded what I'm going to make with them yet. Do you like that, Diane? I'm just using my bone folder. Now, you could tie these shut if you want. If you put them under a book for a day or so, that will also make them stay closed but this watercolor paper is really thick so it kind of wants to pop open but i like it okay all right so so far today i've made four journals exactly sandra you reuse those christmas cards you know or junk mail or pages out of uh, pictures out of a book or photos that you took maybe you took some christmas photos like a close-up of merry christmas or um, some christmas ornaments in your house and you could print those off and use that as your focal point all right so now let's do this i've got these scraps of paper here because i wanted to show y'all an idea of using these leftover pieces for things so i've got different pieces laying here i'm gonna grab a book page here's here's a here's a page that i'm going to just kind of collage on and we're going to cut it up so right off the bat i've got some book pages here that are plain i'll trim off only because i want there not to be any um white edges and i can use these some other way so i've got this guy so let's see here i have some more stamps here Mm -hmm. Ah, there's my Bella Rose stamp. There's the Bella Rose stamp. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp on this. So I'm going to stamp. I'm going to move my stamp over. Kind of stamp it like this. So here again, without even adding color, I'm altering that book page. Can you see that? I'm going to go ahead and put some distress inks on the edges. This technique that I'm going to show y'all, this is basically, I used to make a lot of mosaics for years. And we would just take scraps of paper and put them into strips and then just make these little pieces up and cut them up into smaller pieces. I mean, it's just, it's like it doesn't end. <laughs> All right. So I've got a couple pieces that I've already done some painting on. So I'm thinking what color do I want to use? 
I've got little pieces. How about I've got a pink here. So I've got a pink. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush. And this is uh, Christmas Cherry. And I think this is from the um, Christmas Peacock Tattered Angels kit. So it's kind of a pinkish, kind of a dark pink. I'm going to see how we just transform that piece of paper. Poke, poke, nudge, nudge. Y'all get in on the raffle. Yes, or some of the 35 tons of scrapbook paper. Exactly. That's what this is, is scrapbook paper. Not sleeping, just saying. <laughs> All right, so I've got a book page. We're going to do some collaging. Y'all into the wrap them? All right. It's late there. Okay, I'm going to eat a cookie. I made cookies this weekend, and I've had better. <laughs> Exclamation point raffle, Teresa. I think I didn't blend my flour to sugar butter ratio enough because it kind of still tastes like flour to me. I may not use enough salt. Y'all went after Hercules, boss? <laughs> All right. The winner of our little bundle prize is, are you ready? Jeanette Wild. Congratulations, Jeanette. You've won these little goodies. Yay. And I have your mailing address, so I'm pretty confident. All right, let me grab the next prize. Where'd it go? Do y'all want a Christmas prize? Or do you want me to save that for next week? I'm going to save it for next week. Never mind. <laughs> next Monday, I'll be making a Christmas journal live. And next Monday, I will give away, I have extras of these, um, some of my shaker cards and my tags and a couple other Christmas elements along with a Christmas journal that I'll make next week. So the next prize. You're very welcome, Jeanette. You're very welcome. The next prize is going to be this little pocket with journal cards. There's pockets on both sides. This side you can embellish or leave it. And then this is a gel print. This is how simple you can make a journal card. This is a gel print. I cut it square and then I sewed it to a piece of cardstock. Bam. Done. This is a piece of scrapbook cardstock and I've used the postal cube here. This is one of the faux postage in my shop. And then this is like a cancellation mark over it. So I thought that will be our next prize. Oh, and I have another envelope. So this one is a folded piece of paper, all folded up. And I've got tutorials in my other lives showing y'all how I do this. I need to do just a, a slow tutorial on the envelopes again. All right, so that's gonna be our next prize. I'm gonna reset. And we're going to say um, journal cards and envelope. Let's do that. Let's do pocket. There we go. Pocket journal cards and envelope. So we have pocket journal cards envelope. <laughs> There's a reason for it. All right. So I'm going to put this aside. 
Let's put it in a little bag so I can find it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I have some other papers that were put down earlier. And I'm going to come in here and then just start gluing these down. I'm going to cut this up. So right now I'm just gluing it down because I'm using the book page as a foundation. Kind of like Franken pages. And I think, do I want to do this inside here? I think I can do something like that. And I'll glue that down. got this yellow so let's go all the way across like that so I'm gonna measure and cut and I'm not really measuring I'm just eyeballing it okay hey uh Rody is that right I hope Rody welcome thanks for being here I hope you're enjoying what I'm doing I'm sharing how to create different types of little journals that you can give as a gift. I'll lay them kind of like that. All right, so now I'm going to glue this down. Let's go like that. I have some squares or rectangles of book page that I could put on here, but they haven't been painted yet. So let's paint them what color do I want now I need maybe a darker blue yeah let's do a darker blue so I got sapphire blue here so I'm gonna use my paintbrush again cleaning it out so welcome so glad to have you here and I'm just gonna go ahead and just paint over the whole thing with my paintbrush I could also use acrylic paint. That's dark, but I kind of like it. Close it back up. I'm gonna dry this real fast. I think we need to stamp on top of it. So I'm going to grab another flower stamp. This is the Beach Rose. Large. I also have the small one, but I don't think I have the small one out at the moment. It's even cold in Oklahoma today. Well, you got snow. We haven't had snow in a while. But we got some. We had several inches of snow. And I'm just... Rotating and stamping all over. Rotate and stamp. See there? Kind of gives a little pattern. Alright, so let's glue this down. I think. Oh, and I want to have um, this green. And I have some more purple. I think that's what we'll do. All right, so I'm going to glue this one down. And I think I have enough now for a cover for my journal. Add some distress inks here. And, you know, I'm doing all of this work, piecing things together. And I may end up covering it up, okay? So don't feel like you have to spend a huge amount of time trying to figure out your placement because you're going to cut it up and you're probably, I'll just glue it down. You'll probably um, end up adding something to it that you may not see the whole thing, okay? 
Right now it's 36 degrees. We're above freezing. We froze overnight. I got out this morning and it was slick. I almost fell when I got to the gym. I put my foot down when I got out of the car and there was a ice patch right under my car door. All right, I think I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and we're gonna stitch kind of in and around all of this because I like that look, okay? Just keep it down. All right, we're gonna go to the sewing machine. You like that, Elsie? Just kind of making pieces together. And what I'll do is I'll end up trimming this little area in the center and I think I see something I wanna use with it. All right, let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay. So I'm just going to start stitching around all of these. So I'll start here. I've got it on zigzag. So I'll just stitch across. And I'll just, I see another straight across shot. So we're going to do it. We're just going to go straight across. You don't want to use a whole lot of glue when you're gluing down your pieces. If you plan to sew pretty quick because you'll gum up your needle. Right, I think I'm going to sew this way. And this way. I saw a little bit of some fiber stuck on my needle. I probably had a little bit of wet glue. And we'll stitch across this way. I'll go ahead and go down the edge. Even though I may not get to that portion, I may not use it all, I may use it later. You know, there may be another collage where this ends up. All right, so now I need to come down the middles here. And I'm going to go ahead and sew down this side here. I think that's good for now. So we're going to go back to the regular. All right, what y'all saying? Bye, bye. <laughs> Okay, so now I have this little piece done up. I'm gonna get my paper cutter. And if I look at this, you know, I'm kind of judging where do I want to cut it. I think I'm kind of looking at it. All right, so I want this to go this way, I think. So I'm gonna flip this over and I wanna cut it to be five and a half inches. Do I wanna leave all of this up here? I think I'm gonna trim some of it off by about that much. And then I'm gonna come up here to five and a half inches. All right, so I like that. That'll be from top to bottom. Now, do I want to try to incorporate this or do we like that teal there? I could move it this way. I think I like the way this looks coming down this side, but at the same time, I did stitch it. So I'm gonna slide it over just a little bit where we get this purple in that corner and we have this purple in this corner. So I'm gonna trim off just past that stitching and I like I said I didn't end up using that piece but I could use this piece on another journal where I just put that little piece on there okay 
and maybe add a little sentiment or something. All right, so now I'm gonna go four and, is it four and a quarter? Yes, four and a quarter. All right, and I've got this piece. I'll just set it aside. We may use it somewhere else. So now let's look at this. Do we like it this way or this way? And then I just saw this image. I don't know if we'll use it, but I could put that over the top and mat it. I kind of like that. So let me look here. I have this purple paper. I have a teal paper. I'm thinking maybe I'm almost out of it, but I think I want to use the teal. I finally gotten down to where I only have like two sheets of this paper left. It's a mini Franken page. Exactly. So what if we did a little pop of teal? And it says, follow your heart. Ooh, I've got a heart. Let's see. Where is my heart punch? Heart punch. I want that one. Yeah, that one's okay. It's not my favorite. Um, they're not down there. It's not up there. I've moved some stuff. So now I can't seem to find everything. And as they say, it was in the last place I looked. Well, of course, it's the last place you look because you found it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to cut this to be a little mat. So this is four and a half, three and a half. So if I cut just a small, let's see if that's what we want to do. Yeah, so three and a quarter. And now I'm making more scraps. Oh my goodness, heaven forbid. <laughs> uh, I may have to spend some more time making more journals. Not quite uh, two and three quarters. Kind of like that. Oh, and then I was going to take this punch. And we've got a little heart and we'll stamp on that. Yes, we will. I've got the lace duo, one of them. Thank you, Elsie, for your donation. And I think I'm going to stamp it to where you see a little bit of the top and the bottom of the heart. And I think we need to cut a piece of book page. Let's see if I've got one already that I can use or tear or make a rectangle. But I think tear. So I'm going to tear this. I'm liking that. Let's add some distressings. Thank you, Elsie, for your donation. Thank you, Constance or Connie. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, Linda Gray. Thank you again, Elsie. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Lori. And thank you, Margie, for your donations. I greatly appreciate it. I really do. Um, if y'all didn't know, this is pretty much what I do until my husband yells at me that I have to go work for him because um, he needs help getting stuff done and I'm spending too much money, so I have to earn my keep. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and go around the edge here. I'm using, like I said, walnut stain. I like it because it's darker and I don't have to work as hard to add a little bit of distressing because I don't have time for that. Okay. 
Got all these pieces. All right, so if I map these two together on here and maybe come up into the corner, do I want to go that way? It covers up that pink. I think I want to do it this way because I like the pink back here. So I'm going to glue these together. What are you laughing about? <laughs> I have to go work. I have to work next week. Robin's going to be gone. So Henry's probably going to yell at me to go up to the shop and work. Gee, thanks, Robin. <laughs> All right, I think I want this like that. I like it. Do you like it? Do you like the concept of what I've done here? Um, you could use a rubber stamped image, a magazine image, a greeting card, digital images, scrap of paper. And I think I'm going to put this down there, but I think I want to alter that. So let's, what kind of pattern do we want to use? Oh, I like this little flower. I think we call this a vine. What do we call it? A flower vine? I think that's what we decided it was called, but it's morning glories. So I'm just going to stamp it. And it's just a subtle pattern in the background so that when we put that down, we have a little collage. I think it needs one more element, maybe a piece of lace. What? Linda's going to use lace twice in the same stream? Oh my goodness! <laughs> so what if... So what color should the lace be? What color... And I haven't glued that down yet. Would it be better without the paper behind it? I'm thinking now that I need to change the color of this piece. So, what if I've got a teal here? Let's see what happens if it's too blue. Because you know what? It's just paper and I can grab another piece. I'm just lightly putting a little bit of color on here. This is from the Punked Out Steam kit. I think this is from last year because it says it's frosted steam. Oh. A button in the middle of the, I'm not, I don't want a button, um, cause I don't think I have one handy, but I just see something else that I can use. I'm kind of thinking with either without the lace Pink. What if I did this on there? This is that little embroidered trim, decorative trim. I think that's what it needed. Decorate, let's see, merchant decorative trim. This was $3.99 for three yards. All right, I think what I want to do is go back to the sewing machine and stitch around this area, and then I'm going to stitch around the outside when I stitch it to my card. Or, I mean, not my card, my cover. So we're going to do the sewing cam lamb. And I'm still contemplating this. Do I like that?
maybe what I need to do is stitch this down. I think that's what it needs. All right, so I'm going to glue these together. And I think I can get away with that because I'm going to be on the outside edge. All right, so I'm going to go to the sewing machine. We're going to sew. Oh, already got one. We're going to sew around this portion. Then I'm going to attach this over the top and stitch on top of this. Then I'm going to take this and put it on top of my trainer cover. Okay. Sewing lamb cam. <laughs> You never, no one ever says they're wise. Of course not. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to stitch around the image here. I couldn't get my sewing machine to stop, it just kept going. All right, so we've got the layers all the way around here. So now I'm going to take this piece, which is the little heart piece. Whoop, I'm not in the camera. Get in the camera. And I'll put a little glue on the back of it. And I want to put that down right in this corner. And I'm going to stitch around it. I was pushing down, but nothing was happening. Well, my foot wasn't on the pedal. You can't go if you don't have your foot on the pedal. All right, so I stitched around this little piece. Can you see that? A, a friend just came over to help you fill your lower reel with thread. The hardest part of it is I will be threading the dang needles. <laughs> it is hard to thread those needles, Lori. That's why I bought this machine that has an auto needle, needle threader. I love it. I, you probably can't really see it, but I'll kind of move the camera. Right here, this little thing, that's my needle threader. And it makes this little arm, I don't know if y'all can see it when I push the button. See how that comes down? Well, it'll come around and push the thread right in there. I love it. I, it was the best investment. I'm glad that I got it. All right, so we're gluing that on and then I'm gonna stitch all the way around. Okay. I like this one. I hope you like it. And like I said, you know, there may be, you know, where you stamped and you don't really see it. But you know what? I know it's there and I enjoy the process. Like this yellow piece of paper it, that went all the way across, we only see a little bitty bit of it. But the little bit that I can see, I'm going to point it out to y'all so you know what I'm talking about. So right here is this yellow paper. I stamped the Lace Duo on that yellow paper, and now you can really see the detail. When it was the wide strip, you didn't see it as much. But you can see the other pieces, you know, the other stamps. And you don't quite see the um, beach rose back here, but I know it's there. I know. Why did we wait so long? <laughs> I understand that. Well, you know, I've been sewing for a long time, but I know that I wouldn't want to try to try getting into cross stitch again because that's just not for me. 
Right, Elsie. We didn't have the time back then. All right, so we made that. I like it. And I have still um, a page left. So let's use that for our center. And what else do I have here? Do I have this painted page? What if we did that for our pocket? It's just a painted page that I happen to find. You absolutely love this one. Well, thank you. You have one with a light on it, but it only attaches to the desk. That makes it hard sometimes to see. Well, thank you, Jennifer. You love this one. Merry Christmas, Gloria. Thanks thanks so much for being here. Come back on Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. I have a recorded video where I'll do some gel printing, and then I will make something with the gel prints. I haven't decided what that's going to be yet. If y'all have suggestions, feel free to let me know. I like the way this is turning out. Loop of creation. I like that too. That's a good term. Well, you know, sometimes we just have to get together. And even though we can't be together physically, we can do so virtually. If this is something uh, that you're interested in, I was a, a I hung out with a couple of ladies from around the world. I, I think it was noon for me, but 10 p.m. for them and a couple different time zones. And they were crafting together and we did it through Facebook um, rooms. Facebook rooms is what we did. And it was kind of neat. That's something y'all want to do. Maybe we'll do one of those after the new year. We'll set a time and you can come on Facebook and join us. And who knows how many people will have it. I don't know how many will allow us. <laughs> All right. Looks around that. Your left arm's falling asleep. Oh, come on, move around. You like these little journals, Elsie? Well, thank you. Well, do you want to see one more? Because it's already 5.30. You think you're freezing. Get her out. Get up and exercise. All right, everybody, let's do the jumping jacks. <laughs> do some jumping jacks. Okay. Totally on the fly, creating stuff live for you. All right. So I'm just making a pocket page. Then I'm going to grab my other sheets of paper up here and we'll bind this journal together. That works. <laughs> oh, dear. Actually, I want to go this way. No, wait, I don't jump, Margie says. I understand. All right, so I'm going to grab some papers here. I want the blue. I think we'll do the blue. And then the purple. And a couple shades of green. One, two, three, four. And what do I want to do here? Oh, I like this. Kind of a, a wide plaid. And six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. I don't jump either. You barely stroll. <laughs> My trainer's been trying to teach me to do um, jump rope. Do you know how hard it is to jump rope when you're 50? <laughs> uh. I don't 
know how to jump rope. I, the rope keeps hitting my feet. And then I have to stop because I don't want to break my neck. I'm 50, y'all. <laughs> well, 51, but <laughs> I don't want to break my neck doing jump rope. So he's been training me. We've been practicing. Maybe one of these days I'll get it. <laughs> No way, Jose! <laughs> well, we've been doing jumping jills. All right, jumping jills. And uh, what else has he been having? He's having me uh, uh, split jumps, I think is what it's called. It's where you, basically you have a line, and so you just alternate your feet back and forth over that line. You knock yourself if you jump rope. <laughs> Just knock yourself out. <laughs> oh dear. No jumping jacks while in bed. <laughs> oh, you crack me up. Mm. All right, so I'm just doing a pamphlet stitch here your female upper parts would knock you out <laughs> gotta have support <laughs> <sighs> gotta have support it's kind of fun to use these gel prints all right what do we got With the dang rope tripping on it. You're turning 70, Elsie. Wow. That's amazing. And you're getting around good, right? Gotta keep exercising. All right, there it is. I like it. Need to press it out. losing it I like it it's fully Franken page cover exactly Lori I, you should do it you should if you can uh, afford the time and the money to go get with a personal trainer and have them work with you tell them what hurts Tell them what you don't like to do at all. You know, they'll, they'll help you get into um, better physical condition so that you can do things like live your life. You know, don't go at it that I need to lose X amount of pounds. Go at it like I want to be able to get on and off the toilet <laughs> when I'm 70 years old. Without, you know, having to have a, a rescue bar get me up. <laughs> I want to be able to do that on my own. You know, I want to be able to get in and out of my car, get in and out of my bed, uh, go for walks and be able to do those things. Okay. You like the Franken page licks? Thank you. Oh, how fun, Elsie. That's awesome. Oh no, you slipped the other day walking on your floor and fall on your hip. Oh no, Angelica, take better shape, take care of yourself. Okay. I'm looking here. Do we want to, I've done, so I did this off camera, but just show you that concept, how simple that was. We did this one today. We did this one today. And I got this one. So they're all similar, but different. What do you think? Do you like those? Tacky's like a bug. <laughs> yeah, you've got to you've got to be able to do it. Yeah, you have to exercise, Laura. You do. Not two years old. Oh, how fun! Okay, so. Hope you're feeling better. I'm trying to decide what I want to make next. 
I've got some more of these um, journal cards. You know, I kind of like that. Life is tough, tough, my darling, but so are we. you. I like that. So, what could I use after making these? Put those up here. That's my inspiration. Well, I've already got another sheet of black. We could use that. Um, ooh, I've got this. Um, that's a gold and black together. I kind of like that. What if we did something like... Maybe something like that. You may want to put a little mat or right here. And then that. And then this gold in the background. You love all the mini journals? Well, thank you. All right, we're going to make one more journal. And then we're going to get off here. All right, so I'm going to trim this gold and black piece so that I can get a five and a half by four and a quarter piece. So I'm just going to go, yeah, five and a half this way. So like I'm pretending it was an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, even though it's not quite. And then four and a quarter this way. So that. You can't find that really large bubble wrap. It's, it's hard to come by every once in a while. I get some and I try to keep it. Yeah, that was a, um, gel print Ooh, heart shape ones oh fun all right i think uh thank you lori for your donation cut this piece this is uh two and a half so if we did do i want to narrow 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 or do we want to go bigger go big or go home i think i want narrow I don't want it to be super wide. I just want a little bit of a black border. So this is an artist trading card size. So I'm making it two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Yeah, doctors will tell you to walk, exactly. Okay, so what do we think? Something like this. I may grab, I thought I had another lace. Let's see here. Yeah, it may not, the lace may not go. Oh, I've got this um, gold brad. Oh, yeah, her dictionary words are cool, aren't they? So I changed my mind, and I think what I want to do is put this down and then put this going down the side here. And we'll stitch this together. What do you think? Can you see that? Kind of get the idea? This is just some trim that I've had. It's from the trim shop. I think it's for Christmas stuff. All right, so 
I'm going to glue these together. Oh, don't forget, make those artist trading card size. You like that pretty go? I, I found my baggie of lace stuff. I'm telling you, Robin, I found it. <laughs> Gonna make one per a month. Well, you got a theme. All right, so let's do. Do you have a theme? Oh, funny. No, first person to tell you to walk more wasn't a doctor it was me yes you should walk more really everybody if if you can at all walk if and if you can't then find something else that you can do but get up and move it's important and i am bad about it myself i will get so caught up in what i'm working on that i won't get up and walk so i did today i made myself get up for a few minutes and walk. Um, my Cox internet was having issues yet again. I think I'm going to come down to the, let's go up to the top corner. And they came by today. So while he was outside surveying and everything, I walked until I knew he wasn't going to come knock on my door again. And I saw him drive off and I was like, okay, I'm done walking. <laughs> Yeah, you're so excited. I found that bag. <laughs> well, it's a funny thing. Um, just as you walk out of my room next to my door, I have a wood cabinet. And there are, I am full from floor to ceiling. There's a box on top of that wood cabinet. And the other day I was noticing that I had all this text weight paper in it. And I was like, I need to get that down. And so I got it down and I had three bags of embellishments, lace and trims and beads and papers. And I found a whole bunch of my gel prints. All right. And so I got it down. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch around this piece here and then I'm going to come in. I was trying to decide if I want to stitch it to the side. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to stitch it to the side. So I can stitch this down and then I'll stitch the whole thing over here. Okay. And that'll give that a black border. In fact, I may, let's just do that. I'm going to give it a more defined black border. I got my ruler here and I've got a black permanent marker. I buy those cheap ones at the dollar store. There's like two to four to a package. So I'm just going to go right down this edge. It looks like I missed part of it. So that's what the bad thing about when your piece of paper that you're working on <laughs> is so marked up from stuff. It's time for me to retire the sheet of all these markings. Let's go right at the side. I like using the ruler with it. So it just helps me have a straight edge and I don't accidentally go into the inside. So see how making that a black frame and see how that's going to change how it looks when we sew it down. All right, so let's go to the sewing machine. Yeah, you like that, Robin? Use, use the marker. All right, so I'm going to stitch around this portion up here. So you're getting to see sewing, seeing how I use uh, fibers now, and lace, <laughs> and gel prints, mixed media pages, scraps, book pages. We just got a variety that we're doing today. All right, so this time I'm just going to put it right here. And I think I'll change my stitch to a straight stitch and just stitch right down the middle. So 
So I see I stitched right down the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my zigzag stitch and then I'm gonna glue this down to my journal cover. I'm just putting glue a little bit on here. I'm gonna get that lined up where I want it, smoothed out. Okay, and then let's just stitch around that outside edge. We're stitching away. Looks like I need to add some distress ink. To the edges. All right, y'all see that? Cause you purchased a white one well same thing angelica you could have a, a white border you like that so just changing out a few papers and we get a whole different look all right so let's make a center page and i think what i'm going to do is cut one of these book pages in half Oh wait, I want to do this differently. I want to do it this way. I'm going to do the same concept when we did with the um, romantic swirl where we stamped all over the book page and made a pocket out of it. So I want to go five and a half by eight and a half. Okay. And then I need something for that to go over. So what can I use? I kind of have a green gray. I'm trying to see if I, what I have that is different. All right, I think I'm gonna grab another piece of black. I'm gonna use that. Yup. That card stands out with the gold, didn't it? It helps. A little bit of gold on there. Still not sleeping, Angelica says. <laughs> oh dear. All right, so I'm just taking the book page and fold it in half. All right, y'all enter the raffle. And we're going to give away the last prize here. And then uh, it'll be time to get off and go eat some dinner, for me anyway. So we're going to put that on here. I like the way that looks, that's stark. But I want to stamp on top of it. So we have the bubbles. Actually, I've changed my mind about stamping. I'm going to use a stencil instead. I just saw it too. The one I want to use. Where did you go? 
I need you now, and I have found you. All right, so do we want to do the big or do we want to do the little? I think we want to do the big. And we're going to do it in black. So I'm going to grab the Distressed Ink Black Soot. And I've got to grab a blending brush. Apparently I need to clean out my bin. All my brushes have fallen over. Okay. I gotta clean this up. This is a mess. Okay. So I'm gonna do black soot. This is the uh, polka dot stencil. I don't have the Distress Oxide in black soot. I want to get it. I just haven't yet. I think the last time I looked a Hobby Lobby, they were out. And I was going to use my coupon. <laughs> I need to go back over there. I forgot to look when I was there the other day. Because the Distress Oxide ink is a little bit more opaque. This is a lot grayer than I want it to be, but that's what it would look like. Finished. And I think I'll go ahead and use the black soot on the edges. Oh, thank you, Laura, for your donation. Thank you, Lori, Janet, Elsie, Connie, Karen, and I see Janice Brammer, and Linda Gray, and Elsie again, and Teresa, and Lori again, and Margie for your donation. Okay. that. I like it. I like it even though it's a little more gray than I wanted, but I like the way it turned out. I've been working. I'll show y'all. Um, I was playing around with this color scheme, actually. So I'll show you a layout that I made for a journal page playing around the other day. So I took a book page and I painted it with ivory paint so it obscures the text in the background and I like using, I just realized my camera is way off, I like using the acrylic paint versus gesso because I do not like to write on gesso, I don't like that scratchy surface. I like the acrylic paint better. Then I stamped around the edge, this was the textured edges, and I did a black mat. Then I did another book page in the background where I stamped the French correspondence, I think, on top of it. And this one is using the leafy branch around the edge and matted. And then I pulled out my um, paper punch. I have the, it's a Martha Stewart paper punch. I've had this for years, years and years and years. You find these at garage sales, buy them. <laughs> and I made two layers. I did one in black. And I did a book page that I stamped on, and then I had this little black strip left over, so I put it on top. And that's how I ended up with that page. You like that, Lori? So, this is another version. Giving y'all tips and ideas. That you can just use stamps and... Acrylic paint. Okay, I like that. So now, got our cover. That's going to be our, our two accent pieces. You know, and you don't have to spend the time that I'm spending on making a pocket page. 
Okay. You could just fold a piece of paper and be done. You have that punch, Margie? That's a cute, a cute punch. It does make pages look pretty. I agree. I think. I cut enough pages to make 12 journals if I wanted to. Two, three, four, let's put five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I did 10 pages if y'all didn't catch that earlier which equals 40 pages. 10 sheets of paper folded in half equals 40 pages in a journal. 10 sheets of paper folded in half equals 40 pages. How? When you take one sheet of paper and fold it in half, that is four pages. So however many pages you have times four, and that's how many pages you have. Everybody has that punch. It's popular. It's a popular punch. It's a popular punch. All right, getting all my stuff back out. Need this and this. Got my little template. I kind of like the way this one turned out. I just realized my daughter isn't here today. She must have an appointment. I think she usually has an appointment on Monday. The hostess with the most it's next week will be uh, Angelica. You made 15 little notebooks while watching TV one night. It, it doesn't take long. It really doesn't. You get to tease Agent A next week. Yeah, as part of it, she's going to make sure she takes a nap. <laughs> so she doesn't fall asleep during the live because Angelica you're not supposed to be asleep <laughs> already sleeping <laughs> uh, yep Already sleeping. She'll have her nap now. Oopsie, come on, don't don't catch on me now. My fingers are dirty messing with this black ink. Let's go down here. This off and this off. And we made another journal. Can you believe it? And I've got a mess. Oh my goodness, y'all should see this mess. Right. What do you think? You like it? Here are some of the others. And then I made these before the stream but so I've got six made today so far showing y'all it's a surprise can you please make an announcement Linda Israel it's a surprise yes you can Angelica at Rama thank you from the bottom of my heart Angelica says yay Super duper impressed. She's awake. All right, so we've got. You need a nap, Robin? Well, here's our pro. What do y'all think? Do y'all like these? Did you like how these came out? Give you some ideas. We made four of them live. Been cooking all day. You don't sleep if I don't sleep. I like it. And you could take the time to personalize these for people you're giving them to. 
or you can just use what you have and just make something pretty. I like this one. And I like this one. And I like this one. You know what? I think there's a theme here. Because I like this one. <laughs> and I like these two <laughs> that I made earlier. This one was made the same concept as this one. Where I just kind of put different pages together. That one I didn't get glued down all the way. And layered them up. And I made that my focal point. Which was just stamping on the book page that I colored with Tattered Angels. Okay. You like the Dare to Dream one? Yeah, just collage -y. I'm just putting a little glue on here to fix that. So, you know, stamping versus using a digital image. Like the this one, the black and red and the gold one. Yep, I like those two. Caddy Wampus theme. Exactly, Lori. You have darker and lighter themes. Exactly. And you could do, I didn't, but you could do more vintage where it's the sepia tones. Caddy Wampus theme. Exactly. Caddy Wampus. Alrighty. So the winner, we need to pick of our envelope journal card package is, and I got journals now. Ah, so Angelica says, I let Linda raffle away one journal from me. So are you saying, Angelica, you want me to open a raffle to, um, give away one of your journals and you'll ship it to whoever wins. Just making that clear while she's doing that. Do it on Monday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do that Monday. Okay. We do that to keep me awake. That's what we'll do on Monday. How about that for Christmas for Christmas, Angelica? Let's do that for Christmas. Yeah, let's do that. So, Next Monday, we're going to give away a journal that Angelica is making. Because she's got to be here anyway. So that's what we're going to do. Yeah, let's do next Monday. Yes. <laughs> Diane says, I want, I want, I want to join the raffle. I will be joining the raffle. <laughs> I love Angelica's journals. <laughs> I'm I'm already putting extra stuff in your package. It's getting fluffy. <laughs> you need to be here to win a journal. So we're going to have a free journal raffle giveaway next week. Okay, y'all? Yes, and Angelica makes amazing journals. Henry's home. I think that's why Hercules was barking. <laughs> <laughs> or if he's not, it was somebody outside. Yay! Okay, so let's pick the winner. Okay, and Angelica's going to send it to the winner. All right, awesome. All right, so today, for this little package of goodies, the winner is... Karen Owens. Congratulations. You won this little packet of goodies. And I'll be shipping out items tomorrow. It's payday. <laughs> Congratulations, Karen. Saving your pennies. Yes. Yeah, I, her echo dyeing is amazing, Lori. I love it. And she's made some of her echo dye papers into digital downloads. Those are I, I haven't gotten any yet. I probably should get some. <laughs> Congratulations. You're welcome, Karen. Well, do you think, I mean, I know I took a lot of time today because we were talking and I made the whole journal 
but you could, in theory, you know, if you know how many books that you can make with the supplies that you have, sit down, cut all your papers, make little stacks and do assembly lines, kind of like what I'm doing today, which is just to pick up a cover and then start grabbing other elements to put on top. You could make all these little toppers ahead of time and just make toppers. You got scraps on your desk, make a topper that you know will fit your standard little journal, and then you'll have those later. Well, again, y'all, I hope you enjoyed my live stream today making these, I call them pocket journals because you should be able to kind of put you in the pocket. Oh, no, it wasn't you. It must have been somebody outside. Hercules must have saw somebody drive by or walking by. He's still working. Henry's still working. <laughs> um, thank y'all for being here. You like to mass make things? I do too sometimes. I, I, I like to get in a mode where I don't have to think about it too much. I can just kind of put things together and just kind of zone out and just get a feel. Because sometimes when I'm doing that, I get inspired and I might try something new, even though I'm doing the same kind of monotonous thing over and over. Each one is different. They're similar, but different. So. Putting you lately, you haven't been putting things together into an actual journal. Well, maybe that's something you should do, Lori. <laughs> yeah, keep lending craft supplies. Exactly. <laughs> Margie, I don't need to purchase any more craft supplies. <laughs> I do pay my monthly ink fee and I need to buy some more. Uh, copy paper. I'm almost out of copy paper and I can't decide which brand I want to do. These are great. You love the size. Thank you, Diane. Thank you so much. Get those journals put together. All righty. Uh, Robin's giving me the, ahem. <clears throat> she's ready to go. <laughs> oh, we made it to one journal, Robin. Oh, I see that. I did not. I did not see that. I thought we had not made it there. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. We are doing a journal raffle today. So that means let me get these out of the way and y'all can, I'll start the raffle here in just a moment. I see that now. We made it. Oh my goodness. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're on a roll now. <laughs> I want to get away with the money. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Reset. Okay. Go up here. Donators only one junk journal. Donators only. Okay. So these people have donated. Laura Johnson, Lori Merchant, Jeanette Wild, Elsie Bean, uh, Connie, Karen Owens, Janice Bremer, Linda Gray, Elsie Bean, again, thank you, Teresa Petro, Lori Merchant, again, thank you, Lori, Margie. So I'm going to start the raffle. Good grief. <laughs> I was just trying to get away. And we're going to open this up. So here we go. Y'all get entered, and then I'll flip through the journals. So when I pick a winner, you tell me which one that you want. <laughs> okay, so we have one that says journal that has a yellow rose and butterfly. Yep, you did. <laughs> and then inside, I have this pocket page that has butterflies. Made with gel prints and random papers. Some of Norella's digital pages. This is onion paper. So it has lots of crinkle. Yes, we are raffling a journal today. Enter the raffle if you donated. If you donated, now's the time. I'm sorry, I didn't know we got there. So I'm showing you one of the choices of journals. This is a large two-sided altered paperclip. So it's got a paperclip in there. And so now you have on both sides and it's a pocket and it's got writing space. And then you can stick a card underneath it. 
Bye, Julie. Have a good day. Small polka dot stencil. This is another one of those little notepads, and I just slipped it over a journal page so you have additional writing space. This is a multi-pocket page, so there's two pockets here. This is wallpaper. These are journal cards from Norella at Calico Collage. There's a pocket here, so there's some journal cards in there. There's a collage page using scrapbook paper, um, mixed media paper. The foundation is a book page with some leftover scraps. This is a store-bought card. Oh, and I put the uh, butterfly. That page is in upside down. <laughs> the butterflies are flying down. Uh, no, I did that on purpose. Another journal card. Okay, Robin, thank you. I'm glad you are. You remembered. I knew that Teresa said she was leaving. This is a gel print in the background. This is using the All About Robin stencil. A few more months and I'll offer um, that stencil for sale. I'm going to start offering stencils from the kits that are sold out in my shop. So that is one journal. I've already signed it. Here is another journal. I'll flip through this one. I used cardstock. So we've got the bird journal. And I sewed it, glued and sewed it to a piece of canvas. So you have this canvas texture on the inside, but you have the cardstock on the outside. You didn't smell your soap anymore. <laughs> so this is using the All About Robins kit. The cover and the inside had several, and then I used some bird. This is the, for some reason, I love this stencil. This is the Quilted Starbursts. It's one of my favorite stencils right now. I made like three of these journals. I think this might be the last one I have left. I may end up no one takes it today. I may just keep it because I really like how this one turned out. But I wanted to give y'all an option of a journal. And if you would rather have a mini journal, then you can speak up and say, I'd rather have a mini journal when your name is called. And you just tell me which one you want. I'll get those back out. Okay. And then this is my Christmas dream. This is the reindeer. You love the fabric tie? Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Hey, Teresa's here. Okay, good. Never failed to do so. So on this journal, I don't know if you can see the glitter. I painted the pages with the tulip dimensional glitter paint. And you probably can't see that pattern. Oh, you can, the, the quilted starburst pattern again. I think it's my favorite. I've used it in all three of these journals. <laughs> Use the cardinal stamp and the pinecone duo. So depending on who wins, I'm getting ready to call. You love, you just love the Christmas dream. Thank you so much. This is using some chipboard that I painted. A little pocket here. Made a little tuck spot there. Rubber stamped images that I did in gold embossing powder on. Oh, and the starburst, uh, quilt, quilted starburst is in the background. Jan Brett's kids books. I have. To, I don't know who that is. So I'd have to look it up. Got a journal card here. These are. I have tutorials on how I made these cards. 
I did make two of these journals and I've decided that I will keep one of them. So this is the other one. I, want, I kept the one that has the birds on the front. So this one has the kitty cat playing card. Use different things that I had in my stash and then use the kit. I hand drew this stencil design. Yes, Elsie, it'll go out tomorrow. Yes, Elsie, I got it. I have two subscription box left. I have two of the uh, Christmas Dream subscription box left. Thank you, Janice. I really love how this, this journal turned out, too. And I'm keeping one. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm going to pick the winner, and you're going to tell me what, which one you want. Did you want the Christmas? Did you want the bird journal? Or did you want the yellow rose journal? Or did you want a mini? And I can get the minis out. Okay. I'll lay them here, just in case you do want a mini. Okay. Love them all. The bird bird book is gorgeous. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's the all about robins. All right, let's pick the winners. Let's make sure I got Janice, Jeanette, Lori. No, yeah, Laura, Karen, Linda, Lori, Elsie, Margie, Connie, and Teresa. Are we missing anybody? Connie. Nope, I think we got everybody. All right giveaway the winner is elsie bean congratulations elsie you haven't been to a live stream in forever and you just won and i think you already said you want the bird journal because <laughs> you like the bird journal so i'm gonna wait and make sure you say that yay elsie <laughs> Is this the one you want, Elsie? And it'll go out in your subscription box order. Perfect timing. I need more water. I want to make sure this is the one she wants. I loved how this one turned out. I'm waiting. Waiting on Elsie. She Did she freeze? Was it worth sticking around, Elsie? Was it worth it? Did she pass out? I hope not. <laughs> she probably lost the internet connection. <laughs> Clean my hands off a little bit. I'm waiting on Elsie. Waiting on Elsie. Which one do you want, Elsie? Are you still here? <coughs> I can send her a message if she doesn't answer. Well, this is uh, what we did today. I hope you enjoyed today's stream. Thank y'all for being here. Fans, Elsie, wake up, dear. You won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, Elsie says. <laughs> did you want the bird journal, Elsie? Or does, did you want the Christmas? Or did you want the uh, flower one? So waiting on her. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, share it with your friends. It was long drawn out today, but I think we had a good time. Do you think you can make these little mini journals your version? You know, remember, just because I showed my supplies, think about what you have in your supplies. Say, uh, what can I use? Linda used that, but what could I use? Okay. Always fun. Thank you, Lori. Oh, you want the Christmas one. Okay, Elsie. You get the Christmas one. Congratulations. You know what? That means I get to keep the All About Robin one. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Margie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, I hope you're inspired to create. And again, if you are, 
definitely take a photo and share it in the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. We'd love to see what you are creating. And if you have questions, you know, hey, I'm doing this, but I don't think I know how to do that or it doesn't look right, let me know, okay? Always fun. Thank you, Linda. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Robin. I greatly appreciate your help. You, uh, Everybody tell Robin Merry Christmas. She won't be here next week. So we thank her for being here today. So enthralled looking at the journals. I didn't pay attention. Gotcha, Elsie. <laughs> Yay, Elsie. Well, congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Well, I'm going to get off here. Henry should be home here shortly. I, he's probably still working, but uh, we shall see. Thank you all for hanging out with me this afternoon. I always have a really good time. And uh, it's just fun being with everybody and hanging out for a little bit. Y'all have an amazing day. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you for being here. <laughs> have a great week. See you in the chat Thursday. You're very welcome, Angelica. You're very welcome. Thank you, Linda and Laura and Angelica, and Margie and Karen and Elsie. I know Julie's already gone, but thank you. See you in the group till then. Hey, Vienna, have a great day. Thanks for being here. Not falling asleep. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a great rest of your week. All right, I'm getting off here. Bye, everybody. Bye.